And now to the conversation about the ongoing fuel scarcity. I'm joined by my guest, Nelson Eko Jimmy. Uh, good morning. Glad to have you. Good afternoon, rather. Glad to have you join me. Um, Mr. Mr. Kojimi, let me start by asking what your thoughts are on the ongoing fuel scarcity. Um, it's, it's one of the uh, disappointments with those in charge of the oil distribution system in Nigeria, the petroleum sector that uh, this is not you know how to run the affairs where it concerns you know a country so this uh, present fuel uh, scarcity or uh, fuel uh, crisis is one that does not portend us in good image it's one that has had you know uh, immeasurable you know havoc on our economy as well as on the well-being of nigerians as i speak to you as a Nigerian, I'm, I'm traumatized. I, I panic whenever I think I want to move from point A to point B because of this world scarcity. And I know that uh, rather than access fuel easily at the pump station, the crowd you see at the, most of the fuel stations, save for some fuel stations that have shown that the Nigeria can be you know, better managed with their conduct. I've seen fuel stations uh, sell only to cars and refusing to sell to, to jerry cans. And in such fuel stations, you find less uh, chaotic situations there. So uh, the president's uh, situation is unwarranted, it's unacceptable, it's condemnable. Mm. But then what can be done to prevent this recurring well, situation? Prevent uh, this is not the first time we're having uh, scarcity of fuel. It's a recurring dec decimal in Nigeria. So the question is, what can be done to prevent future occurrences? What this shows clearly to us is that those who are managing this sector, they are grossly incompetent. Because as an administrator, if I'm in charge of affairs of a sector, of, even if it is my home, for example, I run a home. I'm the father, I'm the uh, number one citizen in my house. I have a prepaid meter. At every point in time, I go to my meter to check what is the units remaining. I don't want a situation whereby I'll be in the house, I'll be sleeping, and my uh, public power supply will be cut off because I've exhausted you know, uh, my subscription or my token. So at every point in time, when I see that my, uh, my level of units is going down, I quickly recharge. In that way, I ensure that anytime there's public power supply, I have it in my home. This is exactly the people in charge of our oil industry knows the quantity of petroleum products we, desire, we require to service the country in a day, in a month. So what, how can they come out and be telling us, oh, it's logistics. Did this logistic just emerge from the blues? Did you get the red warning signal? So it shows you clearly that those in charge of this industry, they are not up and doing. And one hopes that those in charge of our, uh, the country generally, I'm talking of the government now, will put a eye into this industry whether it is intentional, whether it is sabotage, and ensure that you know we don't have a recurrence. Because as, as I speak to you, I'm very, very angry. I'm angry because a lot of things one would have done, one has not been able to do it because of this first scarcity. There are some activities one that one was supposed to have undertaken that one could not do because of the fuel uh, crisis. And I know as it affects an individual, you can imagine uh, the number of individuals in the country. This is a country of 220 million estimated, then talk of businesses. Hmm. Now, so talking... it, it, it's, it's something that we should question now, okay. the competence of those in charge of the, the foil industry. Or foil industry. Talking about logistics, if you recall, last week, NNPC communicated this issue of fuel scarcity will be resolved you know, within five to six days. And here we are, the, the issue still persists. What's your assessment of how NNPC is handling this situation? They are not handling it well. I think their greatest problem is monitoring. A lot of fuel stations, as I speak to you, they have fuel, but they are holding it. And who is going around to check that, oh, you, collect, you, uh, you assess 33,000 
uh, liters of PMS uh, yesterday. When did you dispense it? So everybody is a government on their own. The major uh, uh, challenge that the NMPC has in this issue now is not only about you know, logistics, it's about monitoring the petrol stations to ensure that they are up and running, that they are not sabotaging whatever efforts that are being put in place. So for me, I, I, I don't think NMPC is doing well at all. And like I said earlier on, I, I am not impressed. Hmm. I mean, why is Africa's largest producer of oil, Nigeria, in such a situation? Uh, I mean, we're having issue of fuel scarcity. This is not the first time. How can we fix this once and for all? There's no two ways about fixing this thing. It's simple. They have a mechanism for distribution. If you have a mechanism for distribution, you should have a mechanism for following through, for monitoring. And if, in the process of monitoring, you discover some lapses, you quickly make amends. There's no magic about this. I have a company, I have, I have 10 customers, I have supplied to them. In three weeks, I have not seen a customer come back. I should be able to go up there and say, come on, what is happening? Why are you not coming to, why are you not coming to, to restock? What is the level of your business? So there's no magic about it. They have a system in place. They have tank farms or depots where you know, they supply. And I'm sure they have a technological system in place that will make them know that, oh, we have dispensed 30,000. We have dispensed 50,000. Why should there be scarcity? What is going on? Then we move into the field to, to, you know, to monitor, to see whether some people are playing games with the collective uh, destiny of all of us. So there's no two ways about it. It's about rejigging their system, reviving their, their monitoring mechanism to, be, to, to put petrol marketers, independent petrol marketers, uh, major marketers, to put them on their toes. That if you, this is what the law says, if you go against the law, you'll be sanctioned. But a lot of times we see people do these things and nothing happens. We have even had the course to report some of these petrol stations to PPMC then. Nothing happened. Some persons told me that, ah, don't bother yourself. That petrol station is owned by somebody up there in the, in the industry. And I'm like, so because he's a player in the industry, does he mean he's above the law? So for me, there's no two ways about it. It is for those who are saddled with this responsibility to be allowed to their job. And if they are found wanting, the necessary disciplinary uh, action should be meted to them. And they will hope all of these uh, challenges are resolved as soon as possible to make life better for Nigerians. Well, thank you so much for your time on the news. Nelson Ekujumi, public affairs analyst, thank you once again. It's a pleasure.